since last year, I've gone nuts. <laughs> totally nuts. And I'll tell you how and why it happened like that. So six years ago, I left the UN and then started my own organization called Copernic in order to distribute a very simple technologies to the poor communities. Technologies that can save people time, money, and effort. Technologies such as this, clean cook stove. Compared to the traditional way of open fire cooking, this saves a lot of uh, wood, firewood, and then reduces so much of a harmful smoke. Or technologies like this, simple water filter, that can provide safe and clean drinking water at very affordable cost. All the solar light that replaces dirty, dangerous, and expensive kerosene light. Indeed, since we started in 2009, we have been able to reach 400,000 people in 25 countries. And these technologies did indeed save people time, money, and effort. But I am not satisfied. And because of that, since mid last year, I've gone totally nuts. Um, I've gone totally nuts because many of the users of the technologies that I mentioned remained poor. And these, uh, main, most of the technology users are smallholder farmers, and they remained poor despite the fact that they produce a wide range of agricultural produce, including extremely high-valued crops. So I wanted to understand why. So um, I moved from my base in Bali to Flores, uh, which is a, a beautiful island in the eastern part of Indonesia, to live the life of farmers and really to understand why these smallholder farmers remain poor, despite the fact that they grow so many high-valued crops. So the first crops that I looked into in Flores was a cashew nut. So before cashew nut to be ready, to be consumed by people like us, you need to go through a different steps. So this is how cashew nut looks like. So first, you get this, and then separate the nut out of what is called cashew apple. And once the nut is separated, you sun dry for a few days, and many farmers decide to sell this uh, unopened cashew nut. And the five kilos of unopened cashew nut, farmers will get $5. But if you actually open it, peel it, and pack them, farmers can get twice as much. But the fact is that these farmers choose not to do this process even though this could increase their income significantly. And then answer lies in the video. So this is how a traditionally cashew nuts are open. So you can see that this woman is actually spending 15 seconds to open one cashew nut. This is extremely inefficient, right? And this drives me nuts. I will tell you, I will show you how actually it works. So I brought the same tool from Flores. And let's see if I can open faster than she was opening. This is a nut. OK. You place it whoop, here. OK, almost. OK. Hmm, not too bad. So you see that because of this amount of effort required, many farmers choose not to do this. They don't think it's worth the money. So I wanted to find a better solution. So is there a better tool that farmer can use and open these nuts much faster? And the first, um, first tool that we found was this. Well, it didn't work, and even if it did, it's not going to make this opening process 
much faster or easier. So we continue to look for a better one. Now, what is this? So this is foot-powered cashew opener. You don't need any elect electricity, so it's very suitable for the uh, areas such as forest because there's no electricity. Now, I got so excited when I, when I saw this and then actually brought this uh, technology to, um, to the farmers in Flores so that they can try it out. But they found it too cumbersome to use. Uh, it was just too difficult to operate. So it didn't work. If it did, they were able to open 10 times faster, the, 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 the cashew nut. So we looked and looked. And a couple of days ago, my colleague sent me this video. So this is a tool that seems good. And uh, from this video, I can estimate that this can open about 16 cashew nuts per minute. So compared to the traditional way of four per minute, this is four times more efficient. Great, right? So we're going to try this out in, in Flores and see how it goes. So the second crop that I looked into was coconut. So the coconut, uh, if it's sold as it is, farmers will get only about 10 cents per piece. But if they process that into, say, for a virgin coconut oil, they earn a lot more. Right? Uh, so what is the process of making the virgin coconut oil? So you first get the, get the coconut, dehusk it, open it, and you shred it, like this. This is a woman in Adonara uh, Island, opening, uh, shredding the coconut. Now this drives me nuts. Um, is there a better way? So we again searched and searched, and found this. This is our engineer, Abe, trying out a bicycle-powered coconut shredder. Well, it's kind of unstable and uh, probably dangerous, right? And not for many grandmothers. So we are still looking for a better coconut grater. Now, after the coconut is grated, you mix that with water and literally hand squeeze it. Right? So well, apart from the hygienic implications, this process is also extremely inefficient. So we have brought this oil presser with which farmers can squeeze the same amount of coconut oil five times faster. So let's see how it goes. And the third example of a nut is this. This is a candle nut. It contains so much oil, so it burns like a candle. And it, this is used for cooking or cosmetics. And similar to cashew nut or coconut, when it's processed, farmers can get a lot more income. So, OK, how does it? How does it work? So the candle nut will fall from the trees, and farmers will collect, and sun dried again for three days. And then they open it, one by one. <laughs> now you know what I'm going to say? This drives me nuts. So um, I've been looking for a better solution, and this seemed like a good solution. Now, this was originally designed to open a walnut. And I thought walnut and candle nut are very similar in size and hardness. So I thought this is, this is going to work. But in fact, it didn't. So um, I'm increasingly getting more and more frustrated with the lack of simple and appropriate technologies for farmers to use to crack the nut so that they can earn more income. Um, but uh, these three nuts are just some example of, the, of the, the, the crops that the farmers are producing. There are many other things that they are uh, also farming. And uh, we have identified the processing and the productivity enhancing opportunities with the different crops. And we are putting together all these tools in one location, the location that we call Village Depot. So village depot is something similar to kinkos for agricultural product. So farmers will come with their crops and then process it with these simple technologies. Then value will be increased. 
so that they can sell at a much higher price. And the idea is to have these village depots in many locations in eastern part of Indonesia so that they can, the farmers can increase their income. So I believe that the key to reducing poverty is to increase productivity in the poorest communities. Increased productivity will lead to increased income. Increased income will lead to a better educational and health status. In short, increased productivity will get people out of poverty. When that happens, I will stop being nuts. Thank you.